I was wrong about Linux Mint. And in this video, I'm going to spend some time re-looking at my own assumptions when it came to the Linux desktop based on Ubuntu, been around forever, and yet uh, I feel like I've been sleeping on it, or at least on this channel where I'm meant to be showcasing alternatives, giving it a bit of a cold shoulder. So get ready for a lot of enthusiastic, gushy things that I have to say about Linux Mint 20 to be specific, which is not yet officially released as the time of the recording of this video. This is recorded on the 23rd of June, 2020. And uh, yeah, there's still some things that need to be shaken out there before it is officially released. But these are my thoughts on the beta and a full, I guess, review will come if it's necessary. Otherwise, I feel like I may have said all I need to say in this here video. But basically, yes, I've been sleeping on Linux Mint for quite a while and my thoughts the, the reason for this was because I always thought the Linux Mint w was stagnating as a project, that it seemed like it was not going anywhere. Uh, it just it seemed very iterative and giving very minor improvements to what is the desktop Linux experience. But here's what I didn't realize. In my opinion, Linux Mint 20 and probably Linux Mint 19.3 represent some of the most complete desktop computing experiences out of the box that you can get. Okay, so long intro aside, here's what I think about Linux Mint 20. It comes down to the Linux Mint team seem to be able to systematically solve one problem at a time that desktop computer users find either frustrating or find important to them. And notice how I didn't say desktop Linux users, because I think they actually, uh, their appeal goes beyond just the Linux world. The choices that the Linux Mint team have made in this release and in prior releases, the priorities that they, uh, that they push to the top of their development list, uh, solving the problems that everyday people want out of their computer, resulting in what I believe is uh, just such a complete package. For the rest of this video, we're going to jump onto the screen and um, we're going to have a look at what how this plays out. What does Linux Mint do differently? And what I challenge you to do is think about how many other operating systems, desktop environments, Linux distributions out there can boast the same combination of fit, finish, polish, functionality, and everything else that we're about to unpack. Try and keep a running tally of what this video includes and just let me know in the comments if you can think of other projects that somehow tick all these boxes and or do it better because I'm really struggling to come up with any. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, ladies and gents, so here's what Linux Mint brings to the table. Uh, first of all, the, the Cinnamon desktop as it stands in its current iteration with Linux Mint 20, I think uh, brings some of the most coherent and functional desktop design to computer operating systems. Honestly, it's like somebody took KDE and got it streamlined and organized, and then they also took GNOME and made it functional and customizable, and you land with a desktop environment that's super coherent, functional, and it's really performant. So keep that in mind. Now keep asking yourself, how many other projects do the following and do them well? So how many other projects have a suite of custom tools that actually make sense and bring value to the desktop. What do I mean by that? Well, we have the latest edition, which is Warpinator, which is literally a, uh, a solution to AirDrop. Essentially, anyone in, else on the network, anyone else on a local network running Warpinator, uh, and it's available for any Linux desktop out there, uh, can wirelessly send files uh, from computer to computer. Super sweet. What about an update manager? that can handle system upgrades, it can handle package rollbacks, it can handle PPAs, it can handle, uh, it prompts you for a local mirror uh, when you first launch the distribution. It can prompt you and help you swap kernels in and out based on which ones are LTS or other kernels that you might have running on the system. How many other projects have built-in system backup tools for not only their home directory, but also for the system itself? 
Now I realize that both of these apps uh, have, at least with TimeShift, they have a little bit of a learning curve, but honestly, the fact that these two are included out of the box makes it a really complete operating system. All right, I'm gonna stop with the rhetorical questioning now because I think you guys get the point. But Linux Mint also has a fantastic welcome screen that gives you like actually things that you would want to know when you first log into an operating system. Things like, how about you want to choose the desktop color so that it suits the wallpaper you want to pick? Do you want to enable a global dark mode? Why not? It's right there waiting for you. Are you more of a traditional panel user or a more modern panel user? Well, that depends on what you've spent the most time doing. Like I said, system snapshots are prompt you to get them set up out of the box. Uh, you've got custom tools for driver management, prompts you to set up the firewall straight out of the box. I mean, how many other operating systems period ask you to do this? Now, not only that, they have killer documentation that's also available from the welcome screen, quick links to where you can find help, and they can th throw you straight into the system settings from the welcome screen. Now let's talk about system settings for a second, because once again, it's almost like somebody took the customization levels of KDE and put it with the smooth design of GNOME, the simple de design of GNOME, and yet managed to keep it all functional and under the same roof. What I mean by that is that the system settings and the desktop environment settings are in the same doggone window. And we take this for granted when we look at things like uh, Mac OS and when we look at other, possibly other more coherent desktop environments, but even Windows has system settings and uh, desktop level settings separated out across multiple apps. Okay, let's talk about software management for a second. Uh, because Mint has their own custom software manager that can somehow uh, miraculously, and I'm speaking tongue in cheek here, but it can somehow handle native package management as well as flat packs, and yet still keep a curated list of software available that loads quickly. It's curated by user rating and can handle multiple installs and can actually search relatively quickly. And if you don't like how quickly it searches, you can make it search even quicker by simply removing or checking these boxes. This is beats the pants off GNOME Software Center for the most part. And even the Windows Store and the Mac App Store is a little bit sluggish when it comes to searching for apps in their native software manager. Now, the other thing that is kind of new in Mint 20 is the fact that they are removing the ability to uh, for snaps to download and install themselves in the background. Previously, when you wanted to install Chromium uh, the on basic versions of Ubuntu, it would uh, download and install the snap version of Chromium browser in the background. Now, of course, if you didn't have snap enabled on the system, then it would go out and install snap, open that up, run that in the background, uh, and it wasn't terribly transparent to the user. Now the Mint team in the interest of their community have decided to remove that and they've actually blacklisted Snap from being installed by putting a config file in the apt package management. Now, you might think that's a bit heavy handed and uh, me personally, I do, uh, I do use Snap, I do appreciate Snap packages, so it does sort of rain on my parade a little bit, um, but I can go in there, remove that config file and it's all good. And I'm the sort of techie person that, that would do those things anyway. Um, but for the average person who's just launching this up for the first time, uh, here's why I think it's a good decision. Because A, it gives a one coherent strategy for how to manage software. If you want up-to-date, bleeding-edge software, then go through Flatpak. They seem to work better, the Mint team seem to back them. Um, but also, on the other hand, it, it removes this issue of having like 50 different search results for the same thing. For example, even when I search Steam, at the moment, we have two versions here within, actually no, three, what? Um, we've got the repository version and we've got Flathub and then we've got some other stuff going on down here. But you can see the top two are the ones from the repository and Flathub and they're clearly labeled, which is great. Uh, on Ubuntu software, if you look for, actually let's do that real quick. And if I search for Steam, first of all, notice how long it takes to uh, search this thing up. This is on the Ubuntu 20.04 release and like, look at this. We don't even get the top result being Steam. We get uh, two icons here with a bunch of other gibberish that I think is different snap packages. And then I get a couple of options from that one and I get one from this one as well. Uh, yeah, one of them is from the repositories and then this one is from like, I don't even know what's going on anymore. All right, so I think I've proven my point when it comes to software manager. Yes, it could do with the visual overhaul. 
absolutely. But functionally, this software center is solid and I haven't appreciated that enough. So let's talk about customization for a quick minute because when it comes to uh, being able to run and install different parts to the desktop, oftentimes we'll go searching for different applets or different widgets or different things that we can bolt onto the taskbar or sometimes a different icon pack or sometimes a different theme. And all of those things usually involve us going to a website somewhere, opening up a web browser, going to a particular website, downloading a file, figuring it out where to copy paste it to, blah, blah, blah. What if you had a desktop environment that could handle all of that for you and you never have to open a web browser for anything? Well, believe it or not, folks, that's what Linux Mint does. It has add remove in so many sections of the customization system settings here. For example, themes, like I just showed you before. We've got themes based on user ratings. I can simply download and install them and have them as options that I can use here in my system. Now, what about expanding the functionality of my desktop shell? Well, we we'll use extensions, right? Go to download. Once again, we've got a bunch of really useful desktop extensions that can make our desktop shell do what we want it to do. Do we want to be able to tile windows? Do we want to be able to maximize and remove window decorations when windows are maximized? Do we want transparent panels? All of these things are things that I can simply download and enable right here in the system settings. And then the same applies for applets as well. If I want something, a little app to live here down on the panel, I can just go out and find some more. Ladies and gents, being able to find this kind of customization removes so many barriers to people realizing the potential of what a desktop operating system can do. These are the kinds of things that nerds celebrate. But what we forget is that most people just stick with the default because it's nowhere discoverable for them to be able to go out and install these extensions, applets, etc. The fact that Linux Mint have spent the time and effort to bake these into the system and make them available from the system settings does so much. Now, yes, KDE has done this for ages and I applaud that, absolutely. But for some reason, I really feel like Mint's and Cinnamon's implementation here is just smoother. Okay, what about system reporting? Because there's this system report app that lives here in Linux Mint and it gives you simple prompts of uh, things that you might wanna do. For example, setting up system restoring or installing language packs. Maybe you might wanna have some more detailed system information that can help with troubleshooting. So if you're having a weird bug or a crash, you can really easily copy or upload your, your specific system specs to somebody who might be trying to help you troubleshoot. And then of course, if you want a space for all of your crash reports, if you need to go find something later, your crash reports are gonna show up here in your system reports window. This is mad. Like how is it that not every single operating system ships with one of these things? Now I get it, I think Windows and Mac have had this stuff, but I'm talking kind of Linux distributions here. Okay, really quick, let's just jump back to the look and feel side of things. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but like I said with the welcome menu, when you first log into Linux Mint, how many desktop operating systems out there give you the options to customize the color and the, uh, and the feel of your desktop theme while still making it feel fresh and perfectly suiting whatever wallpaper you've put behind it. Oh, and not to mention you can completely customize the desktop effects, whether you want them to be just a pretty straightforward cinnamon style or whether you want them like really crazy and fancy. Maybe you might not want any special effects whatsoever. These are the kind of tools that you get out of the box on Linux Mint and I think it's amazing. Being able to just swap in one of those desktop colors and flick it into night mode if you want it is super helpful. And while we're on the topic of look and feel, what about these insanely good font rendering? Not every desktop operating system gets this right. And while we're on the topic of font rendering, let's talk about multi-monitor support and high pixel density displays. So this is an area that underwent a fair bit of work for Linux Mint 20, and I'm so glad it's here. You can not only set individual refresh rates for individual monitors. You can set the user interface scaling by fractional scaling, and you can have independent display scaling for different monitors. So if a 13 inch laptop that has a 1080p display is too small for you, you can do that to 125% scaling and then have the external monitor that you're plugged into, which is also 1080p at 100% so that everything looks normal. I know it feels like that's pretty wild, but honestly, even Windows kind of balks that up sometimes. 
but it's here and you can go get it in Linux Mint 20 when it comes out that is. Oh and speaking of graphics cards, uh, the graphics cards are installed and enabled out of the box whether you have Nvidia or AMD thanks to the little driver utility that lives here on Linux Mint and, uh, and now that we have fantastic NVIDIA drivers enabled for the Ubuntu 20.04 LTS series out of the box, we now have a little indicator that lives down here in the panel that allows you to switch from uh, on-demand graphics to Intel graphics and back to the NVIDIA card pretty seamlessly. Uh, with context menus in the applications themselves if you want to launch a specific application with a dedicated graphics card. Uh, again, these things are massive when it comes to just the ability to do what you want in a computer operating system and get the most out of your hardware. Look, all of this is wrapped up in a package that is going to be supported for five, at least five years. It offers a clear upgrade path once those five years are over. It's really performant. It works on older hardware and they have desktop environments in available for even older hardware. There's a huge library of software that it supports and their sheer user base alone means that this project A is not going anywhere anytime soon. It's financially solvent and B there's a huge amount of people out there that can help you out when you have a problem. Now for me personally there are two things that I would uh, two, maybe three things that I would love to see change. First of all, I would love to see the default start page for Linux Mint and the control that they have over that to be relinquished. I would love to just see vanilla Firefox installed here by default. Now by default in Linux Mint, you get a Linux Mint start page uh, that's kind of built in and it is a little bit difficult to fully disable it. You need to go to about colon config, type in home into the search, and then put about colon new tab here in the browser startup homepage. Uh, in my experience, that's one of the ways to fix that problem. And now whenever you start up the browser, you just get your standard new tab page. Now, the other thing is search engines. When you go to uh, change the search engine preferences here in the browser, uh, you only get Yahoo, start page, DuckDuckGo, uh, Twitter, and Wikipedia. Now, most of these uh, are monetized in some way by Linux Mint to help support the project. Now, I'm definitely not against doing that. I just feel like it should be an opt-in thing rather than making it very difficult to use like Google or Bing or whoever wants to do that. Now, when you click on uh, find more search engines, it takes you to Linux Mint's website, which looks old and crusty. Uh, and you can then install and enable other search engines from there little links down below. I would love to see this scrapped for the most part and just using vanilla uh, Firefox rather than adding all of these custom tweaks to it um, and then giving an opt-in option for anybody who wants to use it any differently. Also, I'd love to see the Mate heads up display menu uh, from the Ubuntu Mate project. I'd love to see that implemented in some way in Cinnamon. Let me know in the comments if that's already been done and I can go get that because that would be flipping amazing. All right, so I realize I've said a lot of glowing, loving things about uh, Mint this time around. And I think it's because I didn't really appreciate how many components go into making a quality desktop operating system, never mind using Linux and free software to get that done. The fact that, Lin uh, that Linux Mint have done that and have done it well is nothing short of amazing. They have an amazing project here that is one of the most complete, coherent, feature-ready uh, desktop operating systems out there period. This thing weighs in at just under two gigs. It's using only one and a half gig of RAM after everything that I've been throwing at it throughout this whole video. The CPU hardly does anything and the amount of tasks and threads that it loads into a default session is very, very reasonable. All right, so thanks for tuning in. This was a blast, I enjoyed it. Look, let me know what you think about Linux Mint as a project down below. How, when was the last time you ran it? How long did you run it for? How long do you think you see yourself running something like Linux Mint 20? I think the days of it being a newbie friendly or hand holding distro being the main calling card for Linux Mint, I think those days are over. This, this project is bona fide one of the best desktop operating systems out there to date. That's a big claim. Linux Mint should be proud. Hey, Blaine here. Thanks for checking out the Infinitely Galactic project. Look, if you want to find more videos like this, then definitely go check out the channel, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, all that good stuff, and you can chat with me on Twitter at Ingalactic. See you in the next one.